Hello everyone. After having just finished Blackwell Epiphany, I wanted to reflect on, on it, and on the series as a whole as well. So there will be spoilers in this, so beware. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I'm really depressed and I'm basically grieving because, well, it's really, really good. It's a really good game and it's a really good series. And it's been a big part of my life, and it's had a big significance to me, and it's over. It's over. That's it. I'm still coming to terms with that. But in a way, it's a good thing. Because the reason it's so... hard to accept that it's over is because it's so freaking good. You know, it's really amazing to see how far the series has come. Starting with Blackwell Legacy and then Blackwell Unbound, and then Blackwell Convergence, and then Blackwell Deception, and now, Epiphany. I mean, you can see how the graphic styles have changed over time, but it's not just that, it's changed in pretty much every way, really. Ever since the first one, the puzzle design has just steadily gotten better. The art's gotten better, obviously, the sound's gotten better, the sound quality, the music, everything. It's just... It's amazing to see how far it's come. And it started in such a good place, that's that's the amazing thing. It's not as if it started bad and ended up good. No, it started good and ended up really, really good. It's really cool to see how it's evolved over time. How it's changed. So, let's talk about the main what I would say the main theme of the Blackwell series is, and that's death and moving on. Because that's really what it's about, isn't it? You're surrounded by death all the time. I mean, your, your sidekick here, your partner, Joey, he's, <laughs> he's dead. He's a spirit. And you're solving cases and helping other spirits lost spirits that don't accept their own deaths, you're helping them to accept their deaths and pass on to whatever the next world, the next life, the next something is. You're helping them pass on. That's the theme of it, and it's a really heavy subject. And I'm really glad they tackled it. I mean, death. It's a serious thing. <laughs> it's a really, really serious thing. And it's something that most people probably don't want to think about, and don't like to think about, and I'm certainly one of them. I usually don't think about death, because I specifically avoid thinking about it, because it's terrifying. I don't want to die. I don't... I think pretty much nobody wants to die. It's... disturbing. To think that you're, well, mortal. You will die one day. I'm 22 years old. I think I'm probably going to live a hell of a lot longer, but, you know, sometimes I think, what if I don't? What if I die? I might die a week from now. I might get run over. I might have a heart attack. I might die tonight before I even get this video up. I don't know. It's really disturbing to think about. And in this series, you're just, you're always surrounded by death. You're surrounded by ghosts that haven't accepted that they've died, which again is really understandable. Who would want to accept that they're dead? That's that's hard. And you're also, because you're uh, trying to solve these cases and help them move on and you need to gather information, you're also talking to the relatives of the people that died. So you're not just talking to the ghosts and trying to help them move on, but you're talking to people that are still alive and grieving for their lost loved ones. Loved ones. So you're surrounded by death. It's depressing. But I really liked it. I really like it as a subject matter, just because it's nice to see a game tackle that. As really the main thrust of what it's going for. Just interacting with it all the time. It's not just one little thing that happens, but it's pretty much entirely what you do. It's your life. It's, it's Rose's life is dealing with death. Yeah. So I really like the theme. I like the subject matter that it deals with. 
Okay, let's switch gears for a second. Something less depressing. <laughs> so, you're a detective. You're basically a ghost detective. I mean, you're not a ghost. You have a ghost sidekick. And you're detectiving to solve other ghost case? I, I don't... Let me try that again. You're, you're a detective. And that's really cool. It's fun. I mean, you're a detective. You're solving cases. You're putting clues together. That's really cool. And... I really like how... Well, okay. So you have clues. Um, I don't... Oh yeah, it's in the phone. In the phone. So you have notes and you can connect them together. If there's a connection, I don't see it. And I started thinking about that and I realized it's actually kind of... Real, it's almost like um, a twist on the traditional inventory system. Not that you don't have an inventory system. You do, of course. However, however, I was thinking that you don't really get a lot of items to put in your inventory, which is at odds with most adventure games. You know, a lot of adventure games, you're picking up everything that isn't nailed down and you end up with maybe 20 items in your inventory. And I was thinking, you know, you don't get a lot of items. And then I realized, you actually kind of do. It's just that your new sort of inventory is, I guess, mostly the notes. The notes are kind of like a twist on the traditional inventory, but they kind of serve the same purpose. I mean, you look at things in the environment and talk to people and you get new notes. You're collecting stuff from the environment, sort of. And you use them on people and on things to solve the puzzles. So it really is very much like an inventory system. But it's one that's perfectly suited to being a detective. You're looking at your notes on your cases, and you're literally making connections between your different notes. So I just really like that. It's a nice little twist on the traditional inventory system that really fits in with the story of what's going on, that you're a detective. It's just really fun to use. And I th yeah, I thought that was really cool. So let's talk about the puzzle design. I mean, you can't talk about an adventure game without talking about puzzles, typically. So, I... In the older games, I remember, since they have gotten better from the beginning, some of the beginning, uh, some of the earlier games had some fairly rough puzzles, but it's been a while since I've played them, so I don't really want to talk about the older ones. So I'm just going to mostly talk about Blackwell Epiphany. Actually, I'll just entirely talk about Blackwell Epiphany. Yeah, the puzzles in Blackwell Epiphany are really, really good. Yeah, they're really good, and that... I think that means a lot coming from me, because I'm someone who typically wants to punch a wall when it comes to puzzles and adventure games. I mean, I even went so far as one adventure game I played called Akinit. Good luck trying to spell it. Um, I, I basically used a walkthrough for the entire game because I got completely sick of the puzzles and I very quickly realized that it would just be the most unbelievably frustrating thing to go through it <laughs> not using a walkthrough. So I basically used a walkthrough for the entire thing. So my patience for adventure game puzzles has pretty much plummeted as I've gotten older. When I was young, I used to just frustrate myself and just spend hours bashing my head against an adventure game puzzle. It felt like a test of my will, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten really sick of that. I'm just like, eh, I'm stuck. I'm just going to use a walkthrough because this is unpleasant. <laughs> um, so it's saying a lot when I say that I rarely used a walkthrough and... For the most part, the puzzles were really fun and satisfying and logical. So I'm really, I'm really happy with how the puzzles are. That's not to say I didn't have any issues with them, however. One sort of general recurring thing that I didn't quite like is that sometimes I just felt like I was clicking on stuff randomly to try to make something happen. I just didn't really know what to do, so I just ended up like, like maybe I'd go into my notes and go, okay. Do any of these have a connection? So I just randomly. No like, connection. No. This is the. No. I don't. That sort of thing. And sometimes I'd get into that sort of mode, just click on a bunch of stuff, and I'd feel like I have to use every single dialogue option to talk to people, just to exhaust the list of everything, because one of those dialogue options might lead me to a solution, and if I missed it, you know, I'd be stuck. Which feels kind of unnatural. It feels unnatural to have to exhaust every dialogue option in the dialogue tree. Because oftentimes I feel like I've already talked to this character and said everything I've I feel like I should say. So why would I say this other thing? But then I feel like I have to, because it might hold the key. 
and in some cases it actually did. Like I remember I had to really use my notes on the um, the actually let's go to it right now. Change of uh, change of scenery. Let's go somewhere else. Put in your coat. It's cold. This guy. I remember when I was talking to the doorman. I had to use my notes pretty extensively in the dialogue options to get him to give me the name of... I think I was trying to get the... I was trying to figure out what Grace was, because originally we thought it was uh, a person's name, but it turned out it was actually the Grace Church. I remember I had to pretty extensively exhaust my list of things to say to finally figure out that it was Grace Church. Which is what I needed to do anything else at all. It's what I needed to continue. So sometimes it feels like I'm just clicking on random stuff and just exhausting dialogue options kind of awkwardly to attempt to find some way to progress. Which is unfortunate. That doesn't feel good. You know, when you're clicking on something because you think, oh, I think if I click on, like, I'm, I'm thinking I want to do this with this item. So you click on it. You're clicking on it with a purpose. That feels good. At least when what you're clicking on actually works out the way you think it's going to work out. You know, I'm going to click on this door to open it. That sort of a thing. But when you're clicking on stuff just to just to find some way to progress, that's when it starts to feel... Hey, it just doesn't feel good. But that was relatively minor, not that big of a deal. I think, honestly, the biggest problem I have with the, the puzzles, the thing that um, bothered me the most, was probably the puzzle at the end encounter. That was... rough. It's not that it was a particularly complex or difficult puzzle, it was just kind of awkward and I... It really hurt the pace for me. And the pacing, I mean, the story's building up to a crescendo. That, I mean, that was the climax. That was the climax of the story, is that whole encounter. So everything's building up in the pacing. And then to get stuck on a puzzle right when you're, like, in the climax is really, really, really painful. It's... It just ruins the pacing. Completely ruins it. I mean, imagine you're watching a movie and the main character... The protagonist is going up to the antagonist and, I don't know, he's going to finally defeat him and get him back. Revenge. It's a revenge tale or something like that. He's finally going to kill him. Get him back for what he did to his brother or whatever. And then right before the end fight, the protagonist, like, doesn't know how to use the door and gets, like, stuck in a room for five minutes. And then there's a fight. It's that sort of a thing. It's just, like, the pacing is totally off when that happens. And that's kind of what happened. It just ruined the pacing. Completely. Which was unfortunate. It was really unfortunate. That annoyed me a lot. Frustrated. Frustrated me. Again, it's not that it was a particularly difficult puzzle. I, I don't think it was particularly well explained either. What was going on. It felt kind of arbitrary. Just picking up a piece of chalk and like, oh, I picked this up. Why? What? Oh, I'm drawing a line. Okay, I draw. Okay, then tie on the th Oh, that activates it. Okay, and then it's like... <laughs> It just, every step of the way, it felt like I was just clicking on stuff to make it happen rather than actually thinking of it and then executing it, which felt super awkward. And I feel like, if anything, the end encounter in a game like this, I want to specify a game like this, a game like this being a game that focuses on the story. So for a game like this, I feel like the end encounter, if anything, should be vastly easier than previous puzzles, and the reason for that is because of the pacing. Because it's building up to a climax, it's really important that it keeps going, that this momentum keeps going. So the greater the chance of someone getting stuck there means the greater the chance of someone having all of this momentum going forwards and then using all of this momentum to smash into a brick wall. And that's exactly what happened. So, very unfortunate. But it's a testament to how well made the game is in terms of just the story and the acting and all of that stuff that I quickly forgot about that after it happened. So I don't want to say it, was a, it wasn't a big deal. The truth is it was. It really hurt the pacing. But at the same time, it was far from, it was far from game ruining. Yeah, definitely wasn't game ruining by no means. But overall, again, puzzles were really well made. And, uh, let's have a change of scenery. Put in your coat again, Rose. I'm sorry. I'm probably annoying her. She's walking, like, a couple miles, and then coming back home, and then walking a couple miles again. Where should we go? Um... Grace Church? Sure. Let's go inside. Nice and peaceful. Let's get out of the snow. It's cold. 
There we go. So overall, I think probably what I like the most about the series and this game is it's the story and the characters. As much as I like the adventure game part, and it was satisfying to do the detective stuff and make connections and solve cases, I think I like the what I, what I think is going to stick around in my mind the most is the story and the characters, especially the characters. I'm I have a really hard time describing why I like a story. Like I I mean the story is really well written and the characters are also really well written but how do I describe why I honestly don't know I'm saying a character is well written why like why is Rosa well written I'm not really sure how to answer that I don't think I've developed the I don't know critical skills or whatever you'd say to really analyze exactly what makes a well written character so unfortunately, I don't think I can describe it very well, which really seems to... It makes me feel like I'm doing a disservice to a series that's been going for, what, over eight years, I think? The first one came out in 2006, I think? It's been going for a long time. It's been... The story and the characters have been developing for a very long time. So it feels ridiculous to say something so short as, yeah, the, the story and the characters are really good. But no, they are really good. Like, not pretty good. They're really good. Which is saying a lot for a game, because traditionally games don't have very good writing. Usually they don't focus on writing. Usually they're more about gameplay and things like that. So good writing inside of games is actually really rare. And this game has exceptional writing in the characters and the story, everything. All of the writing. I can at least make a vague attempt at explaining why I think the characters are well made. Or well written. They're just... they're... They're so detailed. And nuanced. I mean, you're playing an adventure game where you can read descriptions on so many objects in the world, like this. What does she think about this sign? It's a schedule of services. Nothing is going on at the moment. Okay, there's one object. It says Grace Church. There's more. Of course, we knew that already. And there's more objects. And there's even more. And if we go back to her home, there's a hell of a lot of objects. And every single one has a separate description. Oh, it doesn't say it now because I've already done it once, I guess. So unfortunately she doesn't say it, but she did when I first looked at it. So, and this is just one game. I mean, this is one room in one game for a five game series all of the objects like you've you've clicked on hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands possibly i don't know if it's that high but certainly hundreds of objects for both rosa and joey lauren blackwell in happier times well happier for them at any rate i was mostly ignored <laughs> see there you go there's something about his character right there just in this one thing and he can and he has descriptions for everything, every single thing, in this one room. So again, multiply all of that out for all of the objects that you click on and examine in all of the games, and you end up with... You just, you know so much about the characters. Because you've heard their thoughts about so many different things. Which is... Wonderful. You get so much detail about who they are. As a person. Or as a ghost, in Joey's case. Which I, I suppose doesn't really say anything about the quality of their writing. After all, you could have separate descriptions for everything, but they could be terribly written. But the point is, by reading all of these things and hearing their thoughts, they're just... I guess they, they did a really good job of putting the character's personality into what they say. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's starting to form on my mind how to actually describe this. So yeah, there's a lot of their personality in the descriptions. Joey is always sarcastic. He's a wise-ass. And I love him for it. And that bleeds through into everything he says. Red's computer thing, I still have no idea how it works. Yeah, he's from an older time. He doesn't know what the hell computers are. Hell, earlier in the game, he called the uh, the computer mouse the moose. <laughs> and he thinks everything that's electronic is a phone. That clock is right twice a day, but not much else. There's just so much character in the writing. 
And again, multiply that over all the objects you examine and all of the conversations you have, and you just end up with knowing so much and feeling like you know know these characters so well. It's wonderful. So that covers the characters. I don't know if I can describe why the story is well written. I don't. I don't know. It's really good. <laughs> I really can't describe why I think it's good for some reason. It's really good. I'll just say that. It is. I guess one reason it's so good is because it does tackle the theme of death, which I really like. And it tackles it with... Oh, okay. More thoughts are forming in my mind. I'm happy with myself here. Um, <laughs> it tackles the theme of death with... With, um... With subtlety and... Respect. I mean, on one hand, it's a fun game. You're a detective, it's kind of cool, you have a ghost partner, and... And yeah, on one hand, it's fun, but on the other hand, you are helping people move on, people who are dead, people who had real lives, and people who, who maybe still have family members that are grieving for them. So there's a certain amount of sensitivity that you really need to show to the, to the people, to the characters. And it really shows that. You know, each person is... each person that you're helping move on is a real person. They're treated with respect. It just goes, it goes into what makes them who they are as people, and looks past anything, you know, any petty judgments. Like there's a one woman who earlier in her life was a prostitute, and you know that didn't matter. It wasn't like you're a terrible person or anything like that, or in sort of moralizing or something like that. And like, good thing you turned your life around. There's none of that. It's just you know that's part of who she was. That's. You know, th that's it. That's part of who she was. She's a person. We're helping her move on. It's just, it treats the other everybody with respect and dignity. And I really like that. So, it's been a long journey. I think that's one of the reasons I feel so connected. To the characters and everything that's happened. It's not just because it's well written, but also because it's it's so long. How long this has been going on for? It's been going on for at least eight years since the first game came out. Since this has all been started. Of course, I didn't play the original when it first came out in 2006, but it has been a while since I played the rest of the games. And if you add up all the hours played between all five games, it's 20 plus hours, probably quite a bit more than that. I mean, this game alone is about 10 hours, so yeah, it's probably 20 to 30 hours, I'd estimate. Point is, it's a long time, both in terms of within the game's universe, all of the events that you're taking part in have happened over a pretty long period of time, but also just in real-world time. It's been years since I played the original games, the previous games. So it's something that's been happening for a very long time. It's just, it's it's been there for so long, and I've been with these characters for so long, I just, I care about them. I love them. I feel connected to them. It actually reminds me quite a bit of The Longest Journey. Um, in in the sense that it reminds me of how I, fe uh, how I felt and still feel about The Longest Journey. In that it's a really personal tale about someone's journey. Uh, in this game, of course, it's multiple people's journey. It's not just one person. Mainly Rosa and Joey. But it's about a long journey. It, f it feels epic. Everything that's happened, it's so, it's just so long. They've been, you know, they've been through so much. And it just reminds me a lot of how I feel about The Longest Journey in that respect. Where I just feel really connected to the main character or characters. Because of how much detail it goes into, into the character and how much character building there is and for how long the experience and the journey is. And that's high praise, because The Longest Journey is... One of my favorite adventure games of all time. It's the first one I... I don't, I'm sure it's not the first one I played, but it's the first one I really concretely remember. And it's stuck in my mind as... A f I guess a, f a formative game that showed me that games can have amazing stories and games can be... hold a lot of significance to me. And I can really care for the characters in a, st in a game. 
It really showed me that a strong story and strong characters was possible in games when I played The Longest Journey when I was young. And I feel similarly to this series, to how I did to that series. And that it's just something that's been going on for a long time. Such a long time, and I love the character so much, and I just don't want to see it go. I love it. That's why I'm so freaking depressed. Because <laughs> I love this series so much, and I know it's over. All good things must come to an end. It's much better. It's, it's always, always better. To end a series on a strong note, and not milk it out. So in that, in that respect, I'm glad it ended. Because it ended in a good place, it feels satisfying. It feels appropriate for it to end here. That it ends on... the strongest finish you could really ever hope for. I mean, this game is better than all the previous games. They've just been getting better and better, so it ended on a very, very strong note, which is the best way to end a series. But I'm still trying to come to terms with the fact that it's over. It's hard. Good news is, there is a commentary mode that you can enable. So I might play through the entire game again with the commentary on. I probably wouldn't record that. But... At least it's not completely over. I I feel like that'd give me some comfort to hear the the people behind this game talk about how they made it and all of that. So, I wonder. Now that Joey's alive, what's he gonna do? What's his life going to be like? I imagine he has a lot of rather practical concerns concerning the fact that everybody thinks he's dead and his lack of any identity, driver's license, or social security numbers, or anything like that. I'm not exactly sure how he's going to make his life. I'm sure he'll find a way. I mean, he's Joey. He's a smart ass, and he's, well, also smart. I just wonder, what's his life going to be like? God, he's pretty much just all alone, isn't he? Since Rose is gone. So freaking lonely. I mean, it's a hell of a lot less lonely than he would have been if he was the only ghost on the entire Earth. Which is what would have been the case if he wasn't made human. Of course, more ghosts would have popped up, but still. Jeez. Yeah. I wonder. And I wonder if when Joey... When Joey passes away... You think you'll see Rosa? Wherever Rosa is? I mean, she's moved on to... somewhere. Don't really know where exactly. But I'm sure she's moved on to somewhere. Yeah. I think one day... Joey will see Rosa again. I'm super depressed again. <laughs> uh, okay. I should probably end the video then. I'm just imagining... Jo well, actually, it's really sad that Joey, Joey would be... I mean, Joey would have to die to reunite with Rosa, but... When they did reunite, that'd be kind of awesome. Just imagining one day after Joey's had a full, happy life, finally. Finally, he's actually gotten to live a life. A proper, real, mortal life. I'm just imagining, after all that, living a happy life, finally meeting up with Rosa again. I'm just going to keep imagining that.
All right, so I will end it here before I just keep constantly reminiscing and making myself even more and more depressed about this series finally ending. Okay, so... Thank you for... joining me. Thank you for listening. And... I'm not sure what else to say. I don't really want to stop recording. I don't really want to let this game go. Which is kind of ironic, because this game is all about letting go and convincing s spirits to move on and accept their death, and I need to accept that this series is over, but I still haven't yet. Which is really ironic. Okay, I'm actually gonna end it for real now. Goodbye!